America is becoming a nation of early birds, much like you and me, Sagar. Yes. Um, put this up on the screen. This was this was really interesting. So they talked to all these restaurant owners and you know people running Broadway shows and whatever. This is also from the Wall Street Journal. They say America is becoming a nation of early birds. Um, trendy new restaurants are closing their kitchens at 8 p.m. Movie theaters are swapping late night screenings for matinees. Hybrid and remote workers itching to leave the house as soon as they close their laptops are fueling the shift. Restaurants are now seating 10% of diners between 2 and 5 p.m. That's up from 5% in 2019. Dinner parties starting as early as 5 p.m. On Broadway, a third of shows now running on Broadway start in the 7 o'clock hour on Fridays. Um, that was unheard of, apparently, a few years ago. Um, you also have uh, just some, some of the hard data. Uber trips to restaurants in the 4 p.m. hour have increased nearly 10% since 2019. Rides to restaurants after 8 p.m. are down 9%. Um, you, they spoke with a, a woman who owns a dine-in cinema theater that recently ended late night screenings. She says that her theater now does 75% of its business before the 8 p.m. show, which is now the latest offered. Previously, it was only 45%. Huh. So 75% of their business now before the 8 p.m. show, it used to be less than a majority. And she has a quote here. She says, before we would definitely have a sold out eight or nine o'clock show. Now we are lucky to fill 20 seats out of 100 instead of the late night shows They've added a 3 p.m. show, which she is shocked by how popular it is. And she suspects it's a lot of those work from home people who are yes. like, you know, surreptitiously on their phone, on their iPhone, like sending a little email while they're watching whatever the latest movie is um, and sort of pretending like they're still doing their work while they are out enjoying themselves, which, you know, I'm not hating on them. That's for fine. That. Go do what you got to do. That is absolutely fine. But what would you make of this saga? This is interesting oh, I, to me. I'm loving it. Um, and I can tell you this right now. But this is my personal favorite line. In New Orleans, notorious for late nights, concert promoters used to schedule main acts to start as late as 1 a.m. Now a typical event starts at 6 and ends at 11. I'm like, oh, thank Am I the only guy who thinks uh, that concerts start obnoxiously late? There's yes. no reason that people need to be coming on stage at 10.30, okay? It's out of control. Blink-182, I'll do it for you. But everybody else, it ain't gonna happen. <laughs> um, and that, yeah, I mean, I, that's actually what I tweeted out at the time. I was like, listen, if, if a dinner starts at 7.30, I'm not going. Like, it's, it's just not gonna happen. Uh, I've luckily Correct. at least reached the level of my career where I don't have to artificially stay up until like two in the morning uh, to schmooze with people who I don't even particularly like in the first place. But it seems that those people even, now even they are uh, making sure that they are not staying out as late anymore. So I do think this is a profound impact of work from home. Also though, you know, people know I'm like obsessed with my sleep data and this is largely yeah. at post pandemic. There's a lot of data actually to show that people started sleeping a lot better and actually transition their hours during the pandemic, during lockdown in particular. People added, I believe, almost 30 to 45 minutes of sleep. And most importantly, they normalized their sleep schedules. One of the most pernicious things for sleep is something called social jet lag. And the idea is, you know, people like you and I who wake up ungodly early, uh, whenever we were waking up, let's say every day at 5 a.m., but then on weekends, you stay out until two or three in the morning, and then you mm -hmm. wake up at 11, it actually has a profound effect on your circadian clock because you're effectively always in transition. So one day, you know, you're on a 5 a.m. schedule, then you're at 11 a.m., and then you're back to 5 a.m. So you're always in transition. You're never gonna be perfectly well-rested. Going to bed and waking up at the same time every day or roughly around the same time is the best thing you can do, um, both only for your sleep and for your health, you know, which is profoundly set by circadian rhythm. So that's one. Uh, I'm getting a lot of this from uh, Matthew Walker, by the way, if anybody's interested. He's got a great book, and also he's been on several podcasts. But... Also, it gets to uh, some of the workaholism culture also that pervaded and also the, you know, a grind set. Now, I don't think grind set is always bad, but I think it was profoundly bad whenever it was impacting people's sleep. I could definitely say this from a, you know, a career perspective. A lot of people did not actually have to be at the office until 7.30 or 8 o'clock. They just did it because it was part of the culture. And then they would go out afterwards 
again, to just prove to everybody how tough they were. They're like, yeah, I could party till 1 a.m. and then still be at the office at 6 a.m. the next day. That is mm-hmm. not sustainable for more than like a year or two. And even at that time was terrible for everyone's health. Like in terms of what they were doing, they were just yes. young enough that they weren't paying attention or noticing any of it. So I don't even really think that people are becoming early birds. I think this is what happens when you remove some of the stupid social expectations and you give people more flexibility for what they want to do. And, you know, I can say personally, like, I never wanted to eat dinner at nine or 10 o'clock. Like, it was just one of those where you did it because that's what everybody else is doing. I will also say that in many party destinations, this does remain the same. So when people are truly off the clock, they do seem to be eating a lot later, like places I'm thinking mm. like Vegas, Miami, you know, dinners really don't start there until 9, 9.30. Uh, whereas like in New York, even New York City, which does have a notorious like late night culture, I think some of it does remain. But yeah, I mean, I think it's it's very interesting and, you know, it's obviously much more beneficial to my schedule uh, that I'm like, yeah. hey, you know, can we go eat at 5.30, 6 o'clock? And pe- yeah. people don't say no anymore. It makes me very happy that the yeah. whole world is now conforming to my own personal preferences. So it's yeah. a real win for us. I mean, I think I have personally always just sort of naturally inclined towards being a morning person. And then I was a swimmer, so I had to do the early morning, mm. you know, swim routine, even, you know, in college and whatever. So I think that made it even more ingrained for me. And then, you know, in our show schedule, we certainly are up very early. But I do feel like you're sort of part of this transition because you used to be more of a night owl, more like burning the candle at both ends kind of a guy. And now you've adjusted your sleep schedule. And for me, just as I get older, I'm realizing more and more how, like, I cannot underestimate how important getting enough sleep is. And I certainly see it in my kids as well. If they miss an hour or two, you know, can spend the whole day sideways without much problem. So it's interesting to me though, I mean, basically with the pandemic, we sort of reset everybody's whole work, life, social clocks, everything. And now we've sort of shaken the thing up and seen what habits are gonna stick and what things are gonna revert back to the mean. And I do think this goes hand in glove with the hybrid work discussion we were just having, which is, you know, if you're already at your place of work and you're starting a little bit earlier and then you're finishing a little bit earlier, then that just moves everything up a couple hours and that amounts to a huge, huge difference over time. A hundred percent. Yeah, you're right. I mean, anecdotally, I mean, I I think the reason why I used to be that way is just because I this was the was the DC culture. The DC culture, culture was mm-hmm. it was work hard, it was play hard, it was late nights, and it was early mornings. And actually, I never really started waking up early till I started working at the White House as a, co- a White House correspondent. And that was only because Trump would get his ass up at like four thirty in the morning and start sending crazy tweets. So if you're waking mm-hmm. up at seven, you're hours behind already the new schedule, but at the same time, the social structure did not adjust. So everyone, all of us who were covering it just got like four hours of sleep every night, which is terrible for you. Uh, And you begin to realize that, especially, I think really what it is is, and people who uh, have lost a lot of weight, like I have, um, you know, from the past, what you don't, you you don't realize it until you're out of it. As in, you get Mm. used to a very baseline level of like misery and like discontent. And you just think like, this is reality. And then you experience a new year reality. You're like, I can't even believe that I used to live that way. But when you did live that way, you had no other point of reference. So point of reference, I think, is very important. That's another reason why I don't think that this is going to change, which is you can't force people to go back to that type of life uh, whenever they have tasted something else. It really is, It's. I mean, it's, it's so profound, as you're saying, the mental effects of getting a decent amount of sleep every night that you really are not gonna give that up and are even willing to sacrifice as many of these bosses we talked about previously, you know, $25,000. If you're making 150, you're talking about a marginal increase in your salary, but for possibly like a massive increase in your baseline level of misery. That's not a good trade. And I think they're correct Mm -hmm. uh, actually to to turn that down. Yeah, I agree with that. So to tie it all together, I overall think that it is a very beneficial thing if Americans are becoming less like putting work at the very center of their lives and everything revolving around work and being able to make more choices and have more of a natural like rhythm to their days, I think that is potentially a very good thing.
Hey guys, if you like that video, go to breakingpoints.com, become a premium subscriber and help us build the best independent media organization on the planet. That's right, we're subscriber funded, we're building something new, we wanna replace these failing mainstream media organizations. So again, to subscribe, it's breakingpoints.com.